meeting moderator for about 16. Okay, that was just the uh, announcement that I'm being recorded and I have to agree to it, so I apologize. Uh, thank you for coming to this Zoom. Most of you will be watching this on BXB TV. Thanks to Littleton Cable for recording it. Thanks to Peshan Bartley, our wonderful town librarian. She's gonna be the co-host and making sure the technology works. A uh, big announcement is the library is open for people to walk in June 1st. So, yay. Anyway, uh, there's a one page outline which is available online for those of you that are watching this on television. If not, we're going to share it on and off. I'm going to basically answer five questions. What's a town meeting? How is it different from any other uh, meeting in town? How does it work? How can you take part? And what is going on this June 12th, which is the town meeting for 2021? Okay, first of all, for those of you that don't know what a town meeting is, don't be ashamed. If Peishan could share the outline. Don't be ashamed. I didn't know what a town meeting was. When I came to town, most people don't know what a town meeting is. Town meetings are basically direct democracy. This is very unusual. Uh, I'm sorry, not that one, the outline. We're all used to Republicans, republics. We're all used to participation in a democracy where you elect somebody to represent you. Boxborough, you don't elect somebody to represent you. You represent yourself. U.S. Congress has 535 people, represents 330 million citizens. Commonwealth of Massachusetts has 200 reps and senators, represents 7 million people. Boston City Council, 13 people representing 700,000 people. Boxborough, you come to town meeting, you represent yourself. Town meeting is the legislature. It's a legislative branch. It approves the budget, approves capital expenditures. It votes changes to zoning, land, other bylaws. It approves how much we're going to pay our employees and our elected officials. Nothing happens in the town of Boxborough that isn't voted at town meeting. The select board, the school committee, the planning board, their executive functions, quasi-judicial functions, but they can only do what town meeting votes. There also is a strange group at town meeting, which is sort of unique to New England, which is the finance committee. Finance committee is an independent nine person board that I appoint that makes recommendations to town meeting. Okay, town meeting is totally different from any other meeting in the town of Boxborough. It's a legislative body and you are a legislator. You have the right to participate and the right to vote and the right to talk as a registered voter. Everybody's equal. There's a myth that the select board run town meeting. Select board have no more rights at town meeting. School committee has no more rights at town meeting that someone who registered to vote two days before the deadline. You are the people at town meeting that run it. Everybody's equal. If you go to a select board meeting, you need permission to talk and you can only talk at certain times. You go to a school committee meeting, you can only talk at certain times. You have no right to talk. Town meeting, you have the right to talk. Town meeting, to be informed, this warrant was mailed to every household in Boxborough in April. Everything a town meeting is going to be talked about in this warrant. There's no right for anybody to stand up and make a speech or bring something up that'll surprise anybody. No surprises a town meeting, everything is in this warrant. If for some reason you've lost yours, it's available online or it's can be found at possibly the library, definitely town hall. Okay, 
since we have a legislature, we need someone to preside over it. Uh, another difference in town meeting versus all the legislatures you've heard of is I preside over town meeting and I'm neutral. Uh, not like the Speaker of the House, who's a Democrat or a Republican some years, not like the President of the Senate. Town moderator is a neutral person. Uh, back in 1641, when the Boston town meeting first met, they defined the job as, quote, give liberty of speech, silence unreasonable and disorderly speakings, and put all things to the vote. And my job hasn't changed basically since 1641. I'm neutral. I'm supposed to be neutral. My task is to keep the meeting fair. There's one set of rules and everybody follows them and we'll talk about what they are in a little bit. Open, civil. Civility is not optional at town meetings in Massachusetts and especially not optional in Boxborough. Uh, you will be civil or you just won't talk. And my also need to keep everybody again to within the scope of the warrant. Question, why can't we have town meetings by Zoom? Good question. The answer is state law doesn't allow it. Okay. Town meeting follows a handbook called Town Meeting Time. It's published by the Massachusetts Moderators Association. If you ever want something that'll put you to sleep, you can borrow a copy from the library. It's about 200 pages of parliamentary rules. Uh, there's a four page summary that's in the back of the warrant. The tail end of the warrant is a four pages on how town meeting runs. Hopefully that won't put you to sleep, but it's 200 pages down to four. There is a one page town meeting process which Peishan is going to show. And my goal as the moderator is to keep the process to a minimum. If you ever come to town meeting, have a question on process, just ask and I will try to answer it. The idea is to make it easy as possible for you to talk. Uh, so basic flow is pretty simple. Peshan is looking for the one page process document. Somebody sponsoring an article. Could be select board, could be school committee, could be planning board, could be a citizen. There's a right for a citizen. Every citizen has the right to bring an article to town meeting. Um, that right goes back again to the 1600s and there was an awful lot of citizens partition. Nope, the one pager. There's an awful lot of citizens petitions going around before the Revolutionary War. Acton had one to buy guns and ammunition to fight the British, which passed not unanimously, but passed. So the basic flow is somebody makes a motion to have town meeting vote on something that's in the warrant. They make a presentation. Finance committee stands up and tells you how much it's gonna cost and whether the finance committee thinks it's worth the money. Then you as a voter come to a microphone and talk about, okay, here we go. Okay, motions are made by a registered voter, usually a committee member. Sponsor explains, does a presentation, maximum 10 minutes. We try to uh, push for brevity, conciseness. Somebody else may comment. Then there's the debate. You, again, have the right to say anything you want that's civil. Go to a microphone, say your name and address. You have three minutes, which by the way, three minutes is an awful long time. Uh, Comments will be related to the motion, civil. Sponsor stays to answer your question. Uh, this is sort of like the question period. If you've ever seen the British Parliament, the sponsor's up there saying you should vote for this article and you can ask the sponsor any question you want about why you should vote for it. Uh, the other thing you can do is you can make an amendment. Let's say you think that something is too expensive. Let's say you want to change it a bit. Uh, you can make an amendment. Amendments have to be in writing. They have to be given to the town clerk. 
but anybody has the right to make an amendment and that happens quite frequently. Last year we had one zoning article and I think there were six different amendments made on the zoning article. All of them failed, but they were interesting amendments. Uh, the maker of the amendment gets to present it. I call on the person who made the motion, the original motion. They may say, hey, I like it. Debate closes when there's nobody in line or when someone says, move the question. Move the question is a fancy way of saying, I'm ready to vote, are the rest of you ready to vote? Any voter can stand up and say, move the question. A sponsor can't move to close debate because that's not fair. The person who makes the motion, the person in favor can't really say, I don't wanna hear from anybody else. That's not fair. But anybody else basically can say, I wanna move the question, I wanna stop talking. Uh, reconsideration. Reconsideration doesn't happen very often in Boxborough, but basically you can go through, you can pass it, and then sometimes the meeting has a second thought and says, okay, we'd like to hear that over again. Okay, back to the uh, outline. Okay, there's, town meeting takes a while, and we've come up with a way of saving time without eliminating your ability to talk. And it's what's called the consent agenda. The select board and the finance committee and town council and myself sort of get together and say, okay, here are articles that we don't think anyone really has any objection to. So the select board votes unanimously, the finance committee votes unanimously and those are presented as a consent agenda. We say, hey, we don't think anybody really wants to talk about this, but if one person wants to talk about them, the article comes off the consent agenda. I mean, they're usually things like uh, close out articles, take money from articles that isn't needed and put it in the general fund so we can spend it in the future. It could be uh, expanding the hours of a position that people think is non-controversial, but if one voter wants to talk about it, that one voter can say, I wanna take that off the consent agenda. Could be things like reapproving 23 different revolving funds. It could be contributions to uh, the pension fund. And it could be something expensive like buying a fire truck. This year, buying an $800,000 fire truck is on a consent agenda. If anybody wants to talk about it because it's a lot of money, that's right. But basically, if you've ever seen the pictures of the rest on the underside of the fire truck, the selectmen and select people, I'm sorry, and the finance committee thought that people might not want to talk about it. Okay. The easy part, and then we'll get into talking about what's actually on the warrant for this year. How do you take part? you need to be a registered voter. If you're a non-voter, you live out of town, uh, you're not registered, you're underage, you can talk with permission. Uh, you can make comments and recommendations on motions on the floor. So we talked about it has to be civil. You can propose an amendment. You can move to stop debate and vote immediately. You as voters have an awful lot of power at town meeting. The biggest power is voting. If town, it doesn't matter what the select board thinks, it doesn't matter what the school committee thinks, it doesn't matter what the planning board thinks, it doesn't matter what anybody thinks, if you don't vote for something as voters, it doesn't pass. It's that simple. Most articles take a majority. Uh, some articles that state law says really matter take two thirds. Things like zoning bylaws take two thirds. Debt issuance takes two thirds. Uh, the warrant tells you whether it's a majority or two thirds. I will tell you whether, whether it's a majority or two thirds. So we're moving quickly through this because everybody who's live is somebody that I recognize of having come to town meeting. So now we're gonna get to the good stuff, which is what's on the June 12th warrant. And we're gonna try to find page one of the warrant. 
And by the way, obviously, if anybody has any questions, please ask who's live, ask questions, and I'll try to answer them. The first part of the warrant is the nuts and bolts of running town government. Article three is to set the salaries and compensation of elected officials. By state law, elected official salaries have to be set specifically. This goes way, way back, actually pre-revolutionary war. And this is one of the things that the British did that got the Patriots really upset because the Patriots were used to setting the salaries of town officials and paying them because that way they were answerable to the voters. And the British said, no, nah, we're gonna set the salaries, we're gonna pay them. And that was one of the things that was called an intolerable act. Uh, Article four is the personnel plan. Basically, you as voters get to vote on the personnel plan. There are three parts to that, and there'll be three votes. One is the plan itself, the document that governs town employees. There are a couple of changes to it. Two of the changes this year are adding Juneteenth as a legal holiday. Commonwealth of Massachusetts voted that in June, I'm sorry, last July after a town meeting. The second thing is a proposal from the personnel committee to change the name of Columbus Day to Indigenous Peoples Day. Second vote is positions. We are eliminating about four or five positions because they're not necessary. We're adding the position of temporary town clerk because the town clerk is retiring and is not going to be reelected. A new person is not going to be reelected till next May. So we need a temporary town clerk. The third part is the salaries. Personnel board is recommending 2.4%. Finance committee is recommending 1.4%. Guess who gets to make the decision? You guys, personnel board will say why they think it should be 2.4% cost of living raise. Finance committee will say why they think it should be 1.4%. Finance committee will make an amendment to reduce it to 1.4%. You guys get to vote on the amendment. Article five is the town operating budget. Boxborough has a very, very, very transparent budget. It runs page 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 21, up to page 23. So basically we are very transparent. We have a line item budget. We will go through each line item. Uh, there may be some amendments. As a matter of fact, there is an amendment. The library is going to ask for more money to do an extra day of cleaning, I assume, the library, would you like you to vote for that? Uh, but you get to vote on the entire budget, which is 22.1 million. I'm sorry, yeah, 22, 23.1 million, my fault. So three, four, and five is the operations of the town. Then the rest of the warrant is articles. The articles are for special things. Uh, six, seven, and eight are improvements to Liberty Fields. Uh, Liberty Fields are the playing fields. There's a couple of soccer fields. There's a baseball field. There's a bocce court located on Liberty Square Road. There's a proposal by the Recreation Commission to renovate that, to improve it, to add things. Uh, for 1.5 million. Uh, why is it three articles? Article six is community preservation money. That is from a fund that's is a little bit on your taxes each year that's put in a bucket. And that bucket can be spent for open space and recreation. So six is 300,000 of it to come from that bucket, which has already been collected. Article seven is 1.25 million in debt. And Article 8 is the alternative motion. If Article 7 fails, the Recreation Commission are going to propose a backup, which is Article 8. Those three articles will be taken up at noontime as close as we can. 
As moderator, I will rearrange other articles to try to make that at noontime uh, so that people who want to come, because that's the single largest piece of what's extra outside of the budget on the warrant. Number 10 is addition to staff. The fire chief is hoping to get a grant to pay for three employees for three years, 100% of their salaries. This article approves that. And if he doesn't get the money to pay for the salaries of three people, it approves adding one person. Article 11 is town clerks increased hours. Uh, okay. Now we go to the capital consent agenda. Again, any of these can be pulled off. Uh, 12 is increase hours for the assessor assistant. 13 is for the council on aging coordinator. 14 is for the community service coordinator. Uh, so those are increased hours or 11 through 14. Boxborough again has a very transparent town meeting the rule that Boxborough follows is if it's extra, if it's new people, if it's new hours, you get to vote on it individually. It's not pushed in with the budget and hidden. Boxborough, it believes in transparency. 15 is a compensation study for union personnel. Uh, 16 is stormwater. I don't really understand that, but it's something that's required by the Environmental Protection Agency. Uh, 17 is recodifying the zoning bylaw. Zoning bylaw hasn't been recodified in a couple of decades. This is money to do that. 18 is assessor software conversion, personal property tax, basically hiring a consultant. Uh, this is a lot of money. And if you read the warrant, it explains why they need $120,000 for this. Uh, there is a police police fire Inju injury fund that has run down a little bit. 19 is for that. Uh, item 20 is cable services, including the nice person who's taping this. This is not going to come out of your taxation. This comes out of franchise fees from Comcast and Verizon. 21 OPEB is basically medical benefits for retirees. 22 is close out some articles and lets you reuse the money. 23 is those revolving accounts. 24 is chapter 90 is state highway money. Basically the state gives us money to pave our highway every year. We have to accept the money from the state. It's sort of saying, hey, I wanna give you a birthday present. Would you like to take the present? And that's what that, you just need a vote. Uh, 25 is the community preservation fund. This is the little bit that's on your taxes every year. What to do with it? 26 is to use some of the community preservation money for rental assistance. So that's a consent agenda. They, that will go very quickly unless anybody wants to talk about one of them, which in which case we'll talk about them. Uh, next page two. John, when um, people do wanna pull something off the consent agenda, how do they do that? They just raise their hand, go to a microphone and say, hold. I will read the name of this. For example, I'll read 25, whatever that is. If somebody, you don't even have to go to a mic actually, you just sit in your seat and just in a very loud voice say, hold. And I will say, okay, 25 goes off. Simple as whatever. And then what we will do is vote all of the others 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 26, 27, 20, whatever. So, and I will say, we will vote all of these except for number 25, the one that somebody wanted to hold. Great question. We wanna make it really simple for people who wanna talk about something to talk about something. Town meeting is your time to participate. Okay, capital consent agenda. These are larger items. This is building improvements for the fire department. Even though there's a building committee, there's about $35,000 of improvements that need to be made. Uh, 28 is personal protective equipment. Uh, turnout coats for the fire department. There are always some that are wearing out. There are always some new people coming that need coats of different sizes. This is to make sure the fire department, if they go to a fire, is protected. Uh, 29 is a lot of money. The 
radio box for receivers, which is where all the fire alarms go in, the private and public fire alarms, is really old. I want to say about 20 years old, and uh, it's 20 years old electronics, and I don't know how many of you would be happy running a 20-year-old PC in your house, especially if it's the PC that does your fire alarm and sends it to the fire department for the trucks to come if your house goes on fire. Uh, 30 is a pumper truck, $800,000. Uh, the fire department thinks they need a new pumper truck. This one is old, it's rusty, and they will tell you at town meeting if asked why they need it. Uh, infield groomer, the next three are public works. Infield groomer, the uh, public works rents an infield groomer. They think it'd be nicer to own one and also more cost effective. And the finance committee unanimously agrees with them. This again, the finance committee is very unique in Massachusetts. They basically act for the taxpayers. The finance committee doesn't run anything. They don't do anything except make recommendations. So they're completely neutral. Okay, the next thing is a dump truck. It's about 200 odd, $230,000 worth of dump truck. Again, it's a very old truck. Uh, and uh, they don't think it'll last through another plowing season. We actually had a dump truck go on fire during the plowing season run year. So they're, they're a little bit sensitive to dump trucks that are too old trying to plow roads. That's an aside. Uh, then the last thing is road maintenance. We get money for the state for road maintenance. Uh, in four of the last five years, the voters have also appropriated money to do road maintenance because obviously the more money that the DPW has, the more roads they can fix. Uh, basically, the DPW in Boxborough has a policy of replacing every road on a regular basis. So these are the rest of the consent agendas. Now we get to non-consent agendas. Community preservation, uh, there is a little bit of a debate about how much money should go in the conservation trust fund. So the uh, the conservation committee thinks a certain ten thousand dollars should go in. Uh, the finance committee disagrees. This is why it's not in a consent agenda. You guys get to make the decision. Zoning bylaw for small wireless facilities, aka five G. Five G boxes are very different than the big cable boxes that are on poles that you're used to. Boxborough does not have a bylaw for zoning about how you can, where you can put them, how you can put them up, what they look like. Uh, the planning board is asking you to vote such a bylaw. Uh, 36, there's a solar energy systems bylaw. Again, the planning board, we, we do not have a solar systems bylaw in our zoning. The planning board thinks we should have one. Uh, this one is a little controversial if you read the warrant because not everybody agrees with the planning board. 37 is a citizen's petition. Any one of you, if you can get nine people, all it takes is 10 signatures. You can have your own citizens petition on town meeting. This is a petition to change the zoning bylaw to allow life sciences in the facilities in the town of Boxborough. And to say that animals cannot be used in those facilities for research, testing, development, or training. Since it's a zoning bylaw, all of the zoning bylaws takes two thirds. So this basically the petitioner will say why she thinks we should have life sciences uses in the town of Boxborough and why she thinks animal testing, training, development, research and training should not be allowed in those facilities. Again, you get to make the decision. Uh, 38 is the last zoning bylaw. We have a hazard materials bylaw the planning board is going to update it. They're also probably going to make an amendment uh, to bring in some new information. Uh, it's not going to change what the bylaw says. It's just going to make it a little bit clearer and a little bit more specific. So those are the four zoning bylaws. They all take two thirds. Uh, the planning board will do a good job of explaining them. There's a lot of words in the warrant, but they will tell you what they mean and you get to think whether it makes sense or not. The last two are interesting. The last two are sense of the meeting statements. 
basically on occasion, various town bodies will ask town meeting to take a stand. These are interesting because they don't do anything. They don't change a bylaw. They don't allow the town to buy a fire truck. They don't raise the taxes. They don't do anything, but they're very powerful and they're very important because they basically say the town of Boxborough as a town feels a certain way about number 39, diversity, equity, and inclusion and feels a certain way about sustainability and the environment. These are motions. They were put on by the Diversity, Equity, and Inclusion Committee, and they were put on by the Sustainability Committee. Obviously, those committees feel that the town of Boxborough should take a stand, but this is town meeting. This is an open town meeting. You're the guys that make the decision. Uh, these motions are subject to amendment. You know, if somebody doesn't like the wording of either of them, they can suggest an amendment. Uh, they're subject to defeat. They're subject to passing. Uh, they're last on the agenda just because traditionally that's where Boxborough has had them. That doesn't make, mean they're not important. Uh, again, going back in history, there were an awful lot of these sense of the me meeting motions and. 1765 and 1780 and 1774 and 1773 and 1775. And one of the reasons that literally the British government shut down town meetings is because they were tired of these sense of the motion meetings, along with the ones to buy bullets and ammunition and guns and cannon, I suppose. So they shut down town meeting because uh, they didn't like sense of the meeting motions that said that the king was a tyrant and the governor was a rat fink, which by the way, that's not civil language. So we would not allow a reprehensible person perhaps, but rat fink we would not allow. So that's what's going to be on the warrant. Uh, I don't know if anybody has any questions or if there's anything else I should say. Yes. So the citizens petition, is there any limit to what type of things they can petition for? Or is it anything that is, so they can make a petition about budget? If or sense of you meeting? can make a peti citizens petition can be about anything. Ag literally, you could put a petition on saying resolve, the town of Boxborough thinks the moon is made of green cheese. And if you got nine other people to to sign that, that petition would go on the Boxborough town meeting and the town of Boxborough would vote whether it wants to go on record as saying the moon is made of green cheese. Now that's, that's an example of, but there've been lots and lots of citizens petitions. Uh, back in the 1960s, there were a lot of citizens petitions about the Vietnam War, uh, sense of the meeting motions about the Vietnam War. Uh, Citizens can put, all you need is nine signatures for an annual town meeting, 100 signatures for a special town meeting. And as a citizen, you can actually have your own town meeting. If you get 199 people to agree with you, you can put in a citizen's petition and ask for your own town meeting. That happened in Boxborough three years ago. 235 people wanted a special town meeting to discuss uh, regulation of marijuana in the town of Boxborough. They got the signatures, they got their town meeting and Boxborough right now does not allow a lot of marijuana establishments because of those citizens got their own town meeting. So you can have your own town meeting. It takes 200 signatures to get a town meeting. It only takes 10 signatures to get a petition article on an annual town meeting though. But it's doable, it's happened three years ago. And there are no requirements, so there are numbers for how many signatures you need to get, but for the real meeting itself, there's no requirement of how many people will need to show up. Great point. Boxborough has a zero quorum. Some towns have, have required quorums. Uh, they have to have 200 people or 100 people or 50 people. Boxborough, as long as the, it's actually zero, it's technically zero quorum, but that's really not true. We need the town clerk and we need me. Boxborough actually had a town meeting with four people. 
Uh, we were voting on regionalization. We sent out a warrant that said town meeting was going to be at the Blanchard School. We decided we were running out of space, so we moved it to the Regency. But we have a problem because the warrant said the Blanchard School. So we had two people. The deal was that we reserved parking spaces for them up at the, so they got primo parking spaces. So it was the town clerk, myself, two voters. One voter stood up and say, said, Mr. Moderator, I move that we adjourn this meeting for 15 minutes to the Regency Hotel. Right then it was a Holiday Inn. To the ho and uh, the spouse said, second the motion. I asked if there was any debate. There was no debate. I asked for a vote. The vote was two to zero to adjourn for 15 minutes and to reconvene at the hotel. Then we got a motion, passed the motion, and then we reconvened and we all went to the hotel. So four people. The shortest town meeting in Boxborough history was the one that was scheduled during a Red Sox playoff game back, I think in the, might have been in the 67 or whatever. It was a special town meeting. It lasted about two minutes and it was, it was adjourned to the next night when the Red Sox were not playing baseball. You had to live in New England in 67 to know how, think, how crazy things were. So then this year's meeting is gonna be hybrid. This meeting is going to be hybrid. This meeting is, now the world has changed a lot, but back in February and March when the select board was setting up the meeting, select board gets to determine where the meeting is and when. There were lots of people who said, I don't wanna go inside. Remember we were having 4,000 cases a day as opposed to 400 cases a day, 4,000 cases a day of COVID, the hospitals were full and everything. I don't wanna go inside a building. I don't wanna go inside. And the answer was, well, the parade room at the Regency is 12,000 square feet and everybody's going to be socially distanced and wearing masks. And the answer still was, I don't wanna go inside. So select board said, okay, we'll have the inside meeting and then we'll have an outside meeting in the parking lot. So that was decision number one. Then decision number two was, oh, those outside people will be sitting outside in the dark. Well, actually, I'm sorry. Decision number zero was, we're gonna move it from May to June. We're gonna move it from May to June because another million people will be vaccinated. And by the way, that was a good idea because as of May 10th, think about where your head was in COVID-19 as of May 10th and think of where your head is now. So moved it to June, go inside, outside. Then the next question was the outside people are gonna be sitting outside in June in the dark with generators running floodlights, making noise and with mosquitoes. So the next decision was, well, let's move it to Saturday. So it's Saturday, June 12th at nine o'clock because Saturday is going to be bright. There'll be fewer mosquitoes. So it's going to be Saturday. Uh, the reason that Article 6, 7, and 8, which is Liberty Fields is at noontime is that would have been the first thing on the second night if we had done it during night. So it's only fair to make them <clears throat> the first thing you know, which is noontime, which would basically the start of the second night. So it's going to be inside, outside, Saturday, June 12th. Uh, you're registering for the meeting. If you wanna start outside and then go inside, if there's space, fine. If you wanna start inside and go outside, fine. Uh, Nurse Mary Brolin, who is on this call, has generously agreed to be assistant moderator and she is going to be outside with her hat and her sunscreen. Anybody who's outside, go hat and sunscreen. We've never done this before. We've never had a Saturday meeting. We've never had an indoor outdoor meeting. We have no idea how it's going to work. Uh, we are going to have a kitty section outside and Peishan is bringing activities for your children. Children are always welcome as long as they're well behaved. I tend to find children usually better behave than their parents sometimes, but that's another story. And we're gonna start at nine o'clock, check-ins at 8.15. You're gonna get a little card to wave. Uh, so we'll see you vote because since we're gonna be voting indoors and outdoors, talking votes, 
saying I is going to be difficult to count. So we're gonna give you a nice fluorescent piece of paper to wave around. Uh, we're gonna go straight through the day, no formal recess for lunch. You can bring your own lunch, you can bring your own goodies. The Regency will be doing takeout. They'll have menus and you can just call them up, pay by credit card and they'll deliver the food to the uh, meeting. And our goal is to go straight through until we get it done. We have no idea how long this is going to take. Uh, usually town meeting takes between four to six hours. But again, I have nothing to do with how long town meeting takes. I don't do the talking, you do. If you think that somebody's talked enough, just go to a microphone and say, I move the question and then we'll, and that's a way to shut off debate. Uh, could be interesting. But again, this is your show as a voter. I'm just the neutral presiding officer. Mary is a neutral presiding officer. Uh, there's one motion that I am going to recuse myself from, which is the Diversity, Equity, Inclusion Committee, because I happen to be a member and a gentleman named Mac Reed is going to be the temporary moderator because even though I do not legally have a conflict of interest, I just don't think it looks right for me to be presiding over an article proposed by a committee of which I'm a member. Okay, what did I forget, Mary, Bill? I have a, I have a quick question for you, John, uh, if I may, that uh, refers to something that I'll be personally involved in, but I think it's broad enough that, other, that it may very well refer to other people, so it would help them out as well. And that's, um, as an example, when Article 13 comes up, which is the increased hours for the um, COA coordinator, um, as you know, um, we have taken the COA board has taken a position that we're in favor of that. I will have materials with me and be prepared to say something if need be. But um, I know we spoke about this briefly the other day, but I wasn't quite clear on it. Um, it's part of the consent agenda. Will it be necessary or productive for me to say anything? Or if things look like they're just going smoothly, will I just be quiet and sit there and nod wisely and let it go? Well, it depends upon what your motivation is. <laughs> if your motivation is to get it passed right. and nobody pulls it off the consent agenda, then it's gonna get passed automatically. If, okay. you, if your motivation is to stand up and give a speech, then you can pull it from the agenda. Okay. Uh, totally so if, up to you. So if I wanted to do that, which my speech will be un definitely under three minutes. Um, I wave and say, hold. Yep. And I give my spiel, everybody applauds for me and that's it. Well, okay. actually, actually it misses a little bit. You give, we hold, then I go through all the rest of the items on the mm -hmm. consent agenda. Then I, uh, then the chair of the select board just makes a motion for everything except number 13. Oh, okay. Then we vote that, and then I ask you to make a motion on number 13. Okay, I got it. But Very typically, good. anything that stays on the consent agenda passes. And so okay. you, you put yourself at a little bit of risk if you're the one pulling it off and no one else is concerned. So something to think about. <laughs> got it. Yeah, again, it depends what your motivation is. Mary's 100% correct. Thank you. But yeah, we did, we did actually have somebody a couple of years ago who did a presentation and he thought it was a wonderful presentation and he pulled his article off the consent agenda because his, his rationale was, I've spent so much time in the presentation, I want somebody to hear it. There were a couple of comments afterwards to me, but you know, Mary says it's little risk. Any other, Thank you. Any other questions? Uh, John, I'm not clear. What uh, materials are available on the town website for people who want to do a little more homework before okay. the meeting? On what's happening, number one, if you're inside the hall, we are going to be projecting the presentations. If you're outside the hall because it's daylight, we're not gonna be having video screens, but you're gonna be getting a copy of the presentations. Everybody who's doing a presentation in town meeting, 
had a deadline of last Friday to get those presentations in. Those presentations will be put on the town website possibly as early as Friday, but definitely next week. So the presentations on all of the articles will be on the town website basically for at least a week and a half. So if you're interested, you go to the town website, there's a tab that talks about a town meeting. Uh, say you're interested in Article 7, you just find the presentation for Article 7. So all of the presentations will be, every major article will have a presentation and all of those presentations will be on the town website. Uh, but the main thing is read the warrant. Every single article in this warrant, including the ones on the consent agenda, have a motion, have a summary, have a select board recommendation, have a finance committee recommendation. So this warrant is a lot of paper. A lot of people did a lot of work. So the first thing, if you want to find out something, read the, read, read, read the warrant. You don't have to read the whole thing. You know, it's in numerical order. If you're interested in Article 7, you just go to Article 7. In some cases, it has minority opinions. So if there's something you're a little eh, iffy about, read it. And you may say, oh, I agree with this minority opinion. I think these people, or I, or I agree with the finance committee. I think these people are on my side of this, this issue. A lot of people spent a lot of time on warrants. A lot of people spent a lot of time on their summaries and on their arguments. So read the warrant, go to the website. Foxborough is among the most transparent towns in the Commonwealth. We really, really try to make sure people know what's on the warrant, what's in the budget, what's being spent. There are a lot of towns that do not have our tradition of openness. Great, thank you. John, I know this might not be something that we can decide, but is there any possibility that eventually we will be able to make town meeting also a hybrid or virtual? Okay, I, I'm on uh, the Mass Moderators Association had a committee called Town Meeting 2020, which was pushing electronic voting, which now in almost every representative town, there is electronic voting. Acton has electronic voting. You have to show up, but you vote electronically. We then had a committee called 2030. We now have a committee called 2040. And basically our goal as the Massachusetts Moderators Association is to have online slash hybrid town meetings, hopefully by 2030, uh, maybe even before. Uh, representative town meetings were online this year. Representative town meetings are small groups of elected people. The security issues, we, we have not yet figured out the security issues uh, and the voting issues to do an open town meeting, but pushed by mass moderators, there was an emergency bill passed that allowed people like Brookline and Lexington and Belmont and Winchester to do online town meetings during COVID. My guess is representative town meetings will be online probably by before 2025. My guess is that towns like Boxborough will be online before 2030. That's something that mass moderators has been working on for at least the 16 years I've been involved. The, the big issue is security. The second issue is how you do the voting. Third issue is how people get to talk. And I think what will happen, Peishan, is what you're suggesting. It'll probably be a hybrid, which will, there will be a physical place for those people who want to go to a physical place or for those people that don't have good internet connection. And there'll probably be a physical place where there'll be town officials, people that are making presentations. And then the ordinary citizen who doesn't want to come will probably be able to go uh, from online but uh, using some kind of token or some kind of, uh, some kind of secure device. The second big issue is voting. I think that's an easier one. Believe it or not, voting is an easy one. The big one is re. If you have 150 people in a Zoom call, how do you determine who gets to talk next? That's the big one is scheduling. Uh, the representative town meetings and representative town meetings are anywhere from 100 to 200 people. 
they actually, some of them devoted two people full time during the meeting just to rep, just to get speakers recognized in order. It was, that's, that's a real challenge. But again, definitely by 2030, probably earlier. Which at that time may be somebody else's problem and not mine. Okay, any other questions? Come. Rain date? Rain date is June 13th, which is Sunday. And don't ask the next question, please. What happens if it's pouring both days? There are some contingency plans I'd rather not talk about. But hopefully we will have a beautiful day just like last Saturday. Either that or hopefully Mary has a really good umbrella. I'll invest. <laughs> I have a couple of really big ones. Okay, I'll borrow yours. <laughs> you, you'd have to, you'd be uh, advertising banks that no longer exist that I used to work for. <laughs> so come to town meeting. If you're interested in recreation, if you're interested in baseball or in basketball and tennis and things like that, that'll be about noontime. There will be places for your kids to have activities. You can bring your own lunch. Oh, we will be social as of, as of this week in terms of COVID-19, we will have social distancing. Seats will be set up in pairs, six feet in all directions, social distance, front, back, side, side. We will be asking people, asking people to wear masks when they are in motion not when they're sitting in their seats, because when you're sitting in your seat, you're gonna be pretty well protected. And if there's an unvaccinated person near you, they'll be pretty well protected because there'll be a six foot safety zone around you. But for, as a, as a good neighbor, for those who are vaccinated, those who are nervous, children, uh, you know, we will ask you to wear a mask if you're walking around, if you're going to pick up your food, if you're going to the restrooms, if you're going between a room, you know, as a matter of courtesy, wear a mask when you're walking around, but not in your seats and, you know, not when talking or anything like that. And if you want to pull chairs so you, four of you can sit together, as long as you can have the six foot magic boundary around the four chairs, that's fine too. Can people leave and come back? Yeah, yes, they, I think technically you might have to, and I'm not the town clerk, so I'm not sure. I think you might have to re-sign in, but that's no problem. Yep, you can leave and come back. You only get to vote once though. If you come back a second time, you don't get to vote twice. Any questions? Okay, anybody who's, uh, thank those of you who signed up and are here and listen to me live. Uh, thank you for anybody who watched this in BXB. Thanks to Peshan for arranging it. Thanks to BXB for recording it and showing it. And again, June 12th, Saturday, 8.15 to nine o'clock's registration. And the meeting will start promptly at nine o'clock. Great. Thank you, John, and thank you, Peshan, also. Yes, yeah, thank and, you. This is great. And thank you, thank you, Mary, for agreeing to be the assistant oh, moderator. Yes. My pleasure. I love town meeting. It's just fun to go see everyone and hear from people, and so um, come for the fun. <laughs> yeah, it is interesting, and, you know, the idea is to make it as simple as possible so anybody who wants to come can participate and especially first timers, you know, first timers should come. I mean, a lot of first timers like it and come back the next year, yeah. but it is unique. It is something you've never seen in your life. It is. it is complete and totally unique. The open town meetings are the, this is the purest form of democracy in the entire world. There is nothing like it.
Thank you. That's a good note to end on. Thank you, John. And the library is open June 1st. <laughs> Yay. Thank Yay. you. So we'll see everybody uh, at the library, and I hope we'll see everybody at town meeting. Good point. You will. Bye-bye. Goodbye. -bye. Goodbye.